outfielder Joe McCarthy, and shortstop Daniel Pinheiro. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate Vanderbilt University, uh, their coaches and players. Um, that was an um, incredible baseball game, you know, uh, an outstanding final series between the two of us. And, you know, unfortunately in sports, you know, somebody's going to come out on the wrong end. And we came out on the wrong end tonight. Um, it didn't have anything to do with not handling pressure, didn't have anything to do with a want to, a competitiveness. Each and every guy that was out there on that mound or on the field or in that batter's box wanted to do the job for their team. But unfortunately, in competition, somebody comes out on the, the wrong end. And tonight it was us. Uh, but I can tell you, I'm, I'm so proud of every member of this team, every, every coach. Um, we had a special season, and, you know, it's unfortunate how it ended. But, you know, we played a great ball game, and the competition was good. And the University of Virginia baseball program will be back here in Omaha at some point. And uh, maybe the next time we can win it all. Open the floor for questions. As a reminder, please introduce yourself before asking your questions. Start here in the front row. Jeff? Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Brian, is it even tougher after a game like this when you can go back and look at opportunities like you had in the sixth and the eighth with bases loaded and one out? Sure. I, I mean, I, I think it's human nature as a player or as a coach to, you know, when you reflect back and look at what – could have happened, but, you know, if we did that all the time and we did that in our, in our personal lives, I think we'd drive ourselves crazy. So, um, you know, we had opportunities and, you know, it just didn't happen for us. Uh, like I said, it wasn't for a lack of want to or effort or the right approach or anything. It just, you know, it really, the credit goes to Vanderbilt, you know, they, uh, made some outstanding pitches in the clutch, uh, really did. Um, Stone had a you know really good breaking ball going. Carson Fulmer is a really talented young man, and um, you know they're the guy they had in there at the end did a tremendous job too. So you got to give the credit to them versus us not doing it. I think. Stay in the front row here for Doug. Yeah, Brian, could you talk talk about your pitching decisions? Uh, the Spores take coming out of the first and Artie's performance? Well, I, I, I made the decision after the first inning to go right to Artie. Um, you know, one, because I've learned over four years what Artie Lewicki's made of, and I knew he was going to leave it out all out on the field. I knew he was going to give us the best he had, and I knew he was a strike thrower. And, I've, you know, I thought runs were going to be tough to come by based on the pitching that Vanderbilt had available. And so I just decided after the first inning to make the switch. And, you know, uh, Josh walked a couple of batters in the first inning, and I just felt that we needed strikes. And I thought Artie was uh, tremendous. You know, he gave us a chance to win the ball game. Just didn't, we didn't have enough. Yeah, well, I, I think that more was looking out for Artie Lewicki. You know, this guy, I, I really believe, is going to pitch in the big league someday. He's got a bright future. Um, he threw on Saturday out of the bullpen and did a terrific job. And, you know, I just felt it was time to make a switch. It wasn't for the lack of confidence or, you know, that I already probably could have went out there and give, given us another inning. But, you know, um, I got to look out for his – future in this game. Second row, Anthony. It's for, uh, for Joe and, and Danny. Uh, you guys have had that, that had that breakout inning, even in the loss on, on Monday and obviously um, yesterday with, with the offense. Did you, in the eighth especially, did you get the sense the way it started, you know, Joe, you and Mike get on that that was going to be another breakout inning and just kind of how tough was that? Couldn't kind of take advantage there. Throughout the course of the game, I think uh, we did a good job of getting guys on base, but it just comes down to we never got that big hit to really bust it open. 
Uh, guys were hitting the ball hard, but we just couldn't get that big one. Danny, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, as Joe said, um, you know, they were hitting the ball hard, and uh, I don't know, we just got unlucky. Um, I don't know, we had a base loaded, and we just couldn't capitalize, and I mean, that's just the way the game goes. Stay in the front row, Jeff. Already, uh, Joe and Danny will be back next year for you. This was your final college game, and final college game for some of your teammates. What what are your emotions, you know, at the final out when you realize it's over? Um, I don't think it's really, <clears throat> excuse me, like sunk in yet, but uh, I'm sure later on there'll be some time to reflect and uh, probably deal with some emotions. But I mean, the mo the more the most prevalent emotion right now is just disappointment, I guess, not for me as, you know, my career here, but more of us and our team, the great year we had. And uh, like Coach, Coach O'Connor said, we wish that you'd come out on the better end of it. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. You know, Vanderbilt, they, they, play, uh, they played better than us today. Doug? Yeah, Brian, the game is basically decided on a home run. Their three home runs hit the whole tournament. What did – how – Unlikely, did you think that was, or was that just kind of a perfect stroke, hit it under the wind, and there was no wind at that point? I, you know, I, really, Doug, I, did, I didn't know whether there was wind or not. Um, you know, I didn't, going into it, you don't think, is there a likelihood that somebody can hit the ball out or not? You know, you're, you're calling pitches, and your, your pitcher, you know, does his best to make the pitches. And, and you know, you got to credit Johnny Norwood, you know, he, the, Pitch was up in the zone, and he took an aggressive swing and hit the ball out. Um, you know, it's – I said it the other night, you know, um, <clears throat> a lot of times in this history of this series, you know, somebody has a defining moment. And, you know, Norwood stepped up and took a great swing and drove the ball to the ballpark. Second row. Uh, Brian, obviously it's it's been a long time since the preseason number one team won the whole thing or even advanced the championship game. With all that being said, everything that you did this year, what did you, what was kind of the message to your guys after it was all over? Proud. You know, um, I'm very, very proud of them. We, we met briefly in the clubhouse before we came in here and – you know, this is life, you know, there's, there's disappointments. And, you know, I think a, a man is measured on how they handle it at times when there's disappointment in their life. And, you know, I, I know the young men, the, what, they're, what they're made of, and I know that they'll handle this the right way. And in a strange kind of way, you know, the lesson that they learn through this whole experience that they've had this entire season, in Artie's case, in his career, um, I really think will help them at some point in their life and that they need to walk out of here proud of who they are and who their teammates are and, you know, what program they play for. Here in the front row, Jeff. Brian, this is the deepest any Virginia team has ever gone in the tournament. You've been here a full two weeks now or will be tomorrow. What, what's this been like for you? this run, particularly the Omaha part of it? Oh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's been great for these guys. You know, um, it's, you know, this is their experience. This is their team. You know, I've told the team throughout the season at different times that we'd meet that, you know, this is their ball club. It's not our coach's ball club. It never has and never will be. And, and, you know, I, I know that, you know, the 27 guys that wore our uniform these two weeks, that they had a great time coming to Omaha and competing for a national championship. And, um, you know, the experiences that they have here in Omaha, because the Omaha and surrounding communities make it such a great experience, that, um, you know, these are memories that they'll have for a lifetime. Front row, Jim. Uh, Jim Meyer, a championship thinking coach. A question for Artie, Joe, and Dan. Uh, besides all the technical skills Coach O'Connor has given you, as you think ahead, your walkaways in terms of characteristics, 
uh, your ability to lead, what would you say he's given you specifically in, in that regard? Artie, can you begin? <clears throat> I think the, uh, <clears throat> the most important characteristic that he stressed that you need to develop as a person is um, just to do the right thing. And, um, you know, you never really know who's watching. And, and not only that, but to learn from your mistakes and to take a, a situation that might not be ideal and use it, you know, to make yourself better as a person on and off the field and then, you know, use that information going forward to make better decisions. It's uh, really just taught us to, no matter what you're doing in life, just to be a man about it. And you're going to have ups and downs in your life. And no matter what happens, just keep your head up and just continue. Danny. Um, yeah, I mean, Coach, he's been a great person uh, personally and um, to the whole team. He's just, uh, um, you know, he just tells us to, you know, fight. It doesn't matter what happens, you know, the outcome, just fight, you know, play, you know, as hard as you can. Um, personally, he's been a mentor to me, and I really appreciate that. We have time for three more questions. We'll start with Kendall in the front. Pete will go second, and then the final question in the back row. Kendall Rogers, perfect game. Brian, this question is kind of about Artie. Uh, just just talk about kind of how he's kind of the, the poster guy for your program. He's gone through a lot of adversity, comes here and pitches the way he did. And uh, also just talk about how, you know, you, once again, you kind of raise the bar for this program one step higher uh, with, with guys like him kind of leading the way. Well, Artie's one of our uh, three seniors. Um, you know, what he's went through in his four years with us to, you know, in his sophomore year, becoming toward, at the end of the season, going into postseason, uh, being our, our best pitcher, going into postseason, and then a month later, you know, um, having Tommy John surgery. And then, you know, the the recovery and how you handle that process um, was first class and was as a winner, you know, and and then have it to have it come full circle and this year for him to be back and you know, just really step up through the entire season, Kendall. He had an oblique injury that kept him out for five weeks and there was just no quitting this guy. You know, and, you know, those are when you have young children, as I do, as Coach Mack does, Coach Kuhn does, Coach Cannon, those are the kind of guys that you want your children to see, how they carry themselves, how they handle adversity, and how Artie's handled adversity in his life uh, will make him a better person. And... I think you're spot on. I think Artie Lewicki is a perfect poster man of our program. Pete. And what was the second part, Kendall? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was here in Omaha, you know, th three, four, year, three years ago when we were here, and and just the consistency of what he pitched with this year. You know, uh, you, you go to somebody that, <clears throat> you know, started his whole career and you go to him the day before the first game in Omaha and you have an honest man-to-man -man conversation with somebody that this is what we need to do to win in Omaha. We need to put you in the bullpen. And the response being, Coach, whatever I need to do to help the team win. And he pitches in four ball games here and was just – lights out in all four, um, you know, the unselfishness, um, you know, when you have guys like that around and they have talent, uh, you can't do nothing but the program get better and take it to a, the highest level. And we're forever grateful to people like him that wear our uniform and it'll carry on as we continue to move forward with this program. Pete. Uh, Brian, you you alluded to this a little earlier. Uh, I know coming out here, you you didn't want to talk about the statue. You didn't want it to be about you. And um, I I know the other the other day you you were so excited about the attention your dad was getting, um, and and you speak glowingly about your assistant coaches. Can you give us a sense of the feedback that you've received about what this has meant to the Virginia University of Virginia family? I know you were kind of insulated from it, but maybe 
what you've learned from your wife, and um, I think Coach Maneri was here yesterday. I don't, Coach Henry was possibly going to come in, but can you maybe a little anecdote or something about how blown away you are by how this impacted the larger family, the larger UVA family? Well, as I said, Pete, it, it's um, you know it's about these guys. You know, um, I love this community. Okay, I love this World Series. But quite frankly, there's times that it, I wish I wasn't from here. I'm proud of it, okay? But I don't want it to lessen one bit that these guys' experience. And because that's truly what is most important, okay? Um, this is their opportunity. Um, you know, that said, you know, this is our third trip here to Omaha in the program. Uh, to see, you know, the support of our administration, to see in the lobby the last three days of the Hilton before our team would get on the bus and the reception that they would receive from our fans and our donors and, you know, how these players have been treated uh, since they've been here. You know, they'll, they'll, like as I said, they'll have those memories forever and that's what makes you know, Omaha, Nebraska is so special. It makes the College World Series being here so special because it's in the right spot because of who the people are. And it, you know, makes it a great experience for these guys. One final question. Ian Eckley and AP Broadcast. This is for Dan and Joe. What kind of it, or what do you take from this experience? What do you take into next year? Danny, can you begin for us? Um, I mean, <clears throat> personally, you know, I'm blessed uh, to be a f first year. Um, Joe's sophomore. We get to, you know, have the opp another opportunity to have um, hopefully another result next year. But you know, go to Omaha. Um, I mean, next year's a new thing. I mean, and we're gonna be doing the same thing uh, fall, spring, summer, and um, you know, hopefully the result will change. Joe, anything to add? Uh, yeah, obviously. This isn't the result we wanted to have tonight, but uh, it's something that you want to learn from and really let it motivate you uh, to make yourself better. Maybe come back next year and make sure something like this doesn't happen. On behalf of the NCAA, I'd like to congratulate Virginia on a phenomenal season highlighted by 53 victories and thank Coach O'Connor as well as the Virginia student athletes for joining us.